We are gonna start your new year, your new decade off with a bang. Tana and I are gonna do a six week live class. So starting January 21st, every Tuesday, we're gonna be with you for an hour. And at the end, we're gonna give away over $20,000 in prizes. We look forward to helping you kick off this new year by becoming Brain Health Revolutionaries. Welcome back. We are here with our friend, uh, integrative neurologist, David Perlmutter. His brand new book, Brainwash, is out everywhere to help you uh, make better decisions, uh, how to really implement what you've learned from his other books and from our books, uh, how to put it in your life day to day. And in this podcast, we're going to talk about detoxifying your mind. So just like when you go on a detox diet to flush out the toxins in your body and cleanse your organs, it's also helpful to flush out the Mm -hmm. toxins from your mind. And for me, it just triggered toxic people Mm -hmm. because people are contagious toxic digital, um, the news. uh, And you know, the news is not just the news. It's clickbait. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, I I was watching um, the news this morning because there's all sorts of stuff going on in the world. And every headline was breaking news because they were wanting to hook your amygdala. You had mentioned that in our first podcast. They want to get your fear center to put you into action before your prefrontal and, and cortex can rein it in. And half the time, the story isn't what they say it's going to be. And and I'm one of those people who starts yelling at the TV. So I realized early on, I need to not watch the news. I grab the I headlines, I turn it off. what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> she yells at the TV, yes. So better better the TV than me. Um, Network. Yeah. But talk to us, David, uh, about detoxifying your mind. There's a lot of uh, discussion about toxins in our environment, you know, be they heavy metals or glyphosate in our food and antibiotics and all the various things, particulate matter, for example, that we're exposed to uh, happens to be associated with increased risk of Alzheimer's. But I think the, uh, the major toxins that don't get the attention that they absolutely deserve are ones that you just alluded to. And that is these toxins that infiltrate our brains to put us in a sense of fear and to lock us into more primitive brain function. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the amygdala, for example, an area that has a role to play in impulsivity, in narcissism, in uh, short-sighted thinking, and really uh, an area that fosters an us versus them mentality. And we don't need that anymore. We need to recognize that the them are on the same a ride that we are on, and we need to embrace the them, whoever the them might be. So we need to distance ourselves from this type of thinking and in as such reconnect to higher order brain thinking as mm. we talked about prefrontal cortex. Like that. And that is bringing the prefrontal cortex back online, reestablishing connection, offsetting what we talk about in brainwash, disconnection syndrome. So what these toxins are, are, for example, our digital experiences. We know that by and large, uh, we are subjected to uh, hacking every moment that we are online uh, by ads that pop up, by the next YouTube video that happens to interestingly be quite similar to what we just watched that had been manipulated through artificial intelligence to gain our attention uh, through the clickbait, uh, Dan, that you had mentioned, et cetera. Things that take us down a rabbit hole of mindlessness. Yeah. And we developed uh, in Brainwash an acronym. I know you guys love acronyms. We call it the test of time. T-I-M-E. T. How much time are you willing to dedicate for whatever the online uh, adventure you want to pursue? If you're writing a book, whatever you want to do, trying to reconnect with your friends from high school, how much time today am I going to spend doing that test? I. Is it intentional? What is my goal? What am I trying to accomplish? M, am I mindful during the experience? 
Am I aware of what's going on? Or am I suddenly drawn away by a misleading thought or something that, that captivates me? Much as what happens during meditation, for example. We know when we meditate, we try to stay in a certain place, but we have intrusive thoughts, and we gently and lovingly bring ourselves back. That same sort of mindfulness needs to be brought to our digital experiences. And finally, E, T-I-M-E, is it enriching? Mm -hmm. Are you net positive when it's all said and done? Or when it's all said and done, was that wasted time? Were you taken away to, uh, to be manipulated, basically? And, you know, to be clear, we're not uh, anti-technology. I write my books based upon an unlimited access to information. Uh, the Internet has been a powerful tool to mm -hmm. democratize knowledge globally, pretty much for people who have access to it. So we're absolutely not anti-technology, but it's to use technology as a powerful resource, not to, uh, as was said in 1921 uh, by Christian Lang, Nobel Prize winner, uh, technology is a, uh, a useful servant, but a dangerous master. Yeah. So we've got to use technology and not be abused yes. by it, not let technology and those people who are tinkering with it uh, be the master puppeteers of our attention and ultimately where we spend our money and spend our time. You know, it's so interesting. We had just done a podcast about the dangers of um, social media and the internet for children, and it was a really great podcast podcast. And I think we have this tendency to think, well, as adults, you know, especially if you're adults who know the, the problems that this can cause, know the adverse effects, um, we, we won't be subjected to that. And I have to tell you how sneaky it is. It was not even a week after that, that I was on, I was doing Christmas shopping. I hate shopping. So I was doing Christmas shopping online <clears throat> and all of a sudden something caught my attention and I end up on Instagram and within five minutes, I'm going, wait, why does that woman who's my age look like that? And I don't, and I go down this complete rabbit hole of nonsense, complete useless <laughs> waste of my time. Now, fortunately, because that of what we do. That is a powerful tool yeah. right there. What you just characterized is a very powerful tool that uh, creates problem and solution. Problem right. is generally you don't measure up. Right. You're not thin enough, pretty enough. Uh, I'm not strong enough, rich enough, tall enough, you name it. Right. And here's the solution. And right. And I thought I, mean, I was immune I to it. <laughs> You're exactly right. So, and, yeah. uh, and that's a powerful tool, always has been in marketing, problem and solution based. And it's just one of the many tools that is used on, in our digital worlds and beyond yeah. uh, to make us fear that we're deficient in some area. And here is the quick uh, way to fix that. And, right. you know, it's seductive and it's addictive. And we talk about addictions and... Uh, generally, people think that, you know, to be compromised by an addiction, you have to have a needle hanging out of your arm. Well, people can be absolutely compromised by their addiction to internet time, uh, their addiction to online shopping. There are a lot of things these days uh, that can ultimately form addictions that can be profoundly maladaptive mm -hmm. uh, to an individual in terms of his or her happiness, his or her uh, uh, av availability to participate in life. Uh, and, and ultimately fostering discontent right and the way that they that, that we are hacked into is these are quick avenues for us to think that we're going to be content mm -hmm. but content means having enough and if you're constantly trying to feed that um, you know uh, chase the dragon of uh, uh, to feel content by buying these things and doing these things that you're seeing for example online you are by definition not content nor will you ever be content and you're locking yourself into the amygdala because you are locking yourself into impulsivity. And to get back to the original question, that's a powerful, powerful, immediate toxin that is rewiring our brains. And that was one of our major goals in, in Brainwash is to call it out as a toxin and then to provide the tools for detox. Right. You know, I don't, um, I want to just go back to I'm not enough. Um, because I think that is driving the epidemic rise in teenage suicide, mm -hmm. especially among girls, is because of social media and exactly the path that you described. Now, um, 
you know, with your intelligence and your experience, you could life, override more it. life experience. Than you, you could override it, but imagine this happening to a developing right. brain that is vulnerable and lonely. According to a new study in the United Kingdom, ninety percent of uh, the young adults said that. They had loneliness mm -hmm. issues. They actually created a minister of loneliness. Um, it's if they're lonely and then they feel less mm -hmm. than, they're more likely to feel hopeless and helpless. Well, and you have to know, like, I love your, your description of the evil ruler because you have to understand, like, you can be doing something as innocent as last minute Christmas shopping and the next thing you know that clickbait is there. They know what they're doing. This is- And they have your history. Right. So they, they have your know entire oh, yeah. history. No you have that you may be vulnerable. Right. To and the next thing you know, that issue. pops up on your- So this is, it's not, it's not an, an like an innocent thing that's happening. It's an intentional thing that's happening. So oh, we have to be equally uh, intentional. Aggressive and it is the, the evil ruler. And right. you know, a couple of things you said, well, I, and I think you meant me, uh, I am able to override it. That mm -hmm. was the words that you used. And- override means what it means bringing online the prefrontal cortex mm -hmm. to bring the adult back into the room to make a better decision well plenty of adults cannot override right. because they suffer from disconnection syndrome they suffer from disconnection of the prefrontal cortex cortex's ability to to do exactly that to override and they're basically functioning from an amygdala level the primitive that functionality is is enhanced by not enough restorative sleep, not enough nature exposure, not eating the low inflammation foods that you've talked about for years, uh, and, and, and by the things that happen on our digital uh, experience. And as you well point out, you know, young girls are, are suffering from what has now been called Snapchat dysmorphia, yeah. meaning that their perceptions of their looks are profoundly influenced by the ideal uh, characterizations that they are seeing based upon what they see on Snapchat or Instagram or whatever the platform uh, is, to the extent that there's been this incredible uh, upsurge in plastic surgery to make people look like they want to look on social media or what they think they should look like on social media. And, you know, what does that say? We talk about contentment. That is, a, you know, a glaring example of being a discontent. Of discontent, you're not content with your looks. Uh, and we've got to really do what we can, A, to call it out, and B, to provide those tools then to allow people to regain a sense of contentment, to stop the comparisons, to realize that whomever you're looking at on, uh, on, the, on social media, that truly, when you get down to it, their lives are not what they are portrayed. And to they be don't look like that. I told my my daughter, supermodels don't look like supermodels. <laughs> they're all they're all photoshopped. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about eating your way to better brain health. David has been studying this for a very long time. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 Nine seven eight one three six three.